Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today I'm going to be doing another painting tutorial, this time on Japanese infantry. This is my last Japanese infantry men I need to paint. Well, for now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> really, army is never done, but uh, my initial force for both bolt action and chain of command will be done when I complete this figure here. So this is the standard that I'll be going for. I'm going to be using my um, quick and dirty method that I use for my marines on them as, on these guys as well. So not a lot of detail, um, a lot of washes, a lot of dry brushing, but uh, it gets them done fast and they look decent, especially at uh, tabletop distance. They look great. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. So first of all, as I always do, I have uh, my wet palette which is just a container with um, a paper towel soaked in water and parchment paper over the top of that. It's just done to keep the, uh, so I'm going to put the parchment paper in there, but it keeps the paint moist. Um, it doesn't dry out as fast this way. And I also have my um, glasses that I use as my eyes are not as good as they once were. And that's about it. So the first thing I want to do is the base color on the uniform. And for the Japanese, I'm using this khaki gray. So I got the base coat on, khaki gray. I don't have to be super careful with this one, it's just a quick base coat because we're going to go over it later with the dry brush so, and then we're going to pick out all the details separately later as well. So that's the first uh, step you do and second one, I do these two concurrently. I paint the uniform, then I'm going to use this brown violet just to paint the helmet and then once both of these are done, I'm going to take a wash of uh, my favorite hobby product, Agrax Earthshade. I'm just going to go over the whole model, the uniform and the helmet. Alright, the Agrax layer is done and the helmet is done with the uh, brown violet. So, next thing I'm going to do is just do a dry brush over the uniform only. And this is going to be a light dry brush just to add a little highlights to the raised edges. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the original color, khaki gray, and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this stone gray. You can use any kind of color to uh, mix it with, something to will lighten up the base color a little bit is all you need. And I will be using a makeup brush to do the dry brushing. These ones are great, these kind of stiffer makeup brushes. So I'll just put these, uh, mix these two together, put a little bit of uh, a little bit of it on the brush, brush most of it off on a paper towel or the back of my hands, whichever. <laughs> and then I'll just go over the uh, uniform with it and we'll get the uh, nice highlight on it. dry brush is now complete. So there it is. Just adds a little bit to the raised edges. Just gives a little uh, highlighting, adds a little bit to the depth of the uh, uniform creases and stuff. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting the kit. So I'm going to paint the webbing straps first and the helmet chin strap. I like to start at the bottom layer and work my way up. So the lowest thing is the webbing straps. Oh, if you're getting any of the uh, khaki color, which I'm going to use on the webbing straps, onto any of the other stuff, you can just paint over it as you move your way out. So I'll go ahead and do the khaki portions on the uh, straps. webbing and 
chin strap are complete. Also forgot that uh, for the canteen, there's little straps that the canteen sits in. I do those in khaki, and I also paint the canteen the same color as the helmet, the um, brown violet. So next thing I do is paint the bread bag, and for these guys, I've been using uh, green gray for the bread bag. Next I'll paint the leather pouches. So this pouch here seems to be very common on all these Japanese soldiers. I don't know what it is. Uh, normally they have a, a rifle magazine pouch on here, but I've replaced them with these uh, SMG pouches. So I'm just going to paint those the same uh, leather. And then we have this thing. I'm not sure what that is. I think it, I've heard it was a shovel. I'm not quite sure of that though, because that's a pretty elaborate case for a shovel. It does have this thing sticking down, so I've just been painting it up as a shovel. So I paint that as red leather as well. And here's the color I use, red leather. So there he is with his uh, leather pouches done. Next thing I'm going to do is the boots and the leg wrappings. So for the leg wrappings, I'm going to use this uh, dark green color. Now looking at a lot of pictures, the Japanese soldiers often had a uh, like a khaki colored stripe or X pattern going on the front of the leggings and around the top and bottom. But I wanted to get these guys done quick, so I skipped that on my main line infantry. I did do it for some of my support units. But with these guys, it's not always obvious where that uh, X-shaped uh, khaki um, strip would be, so some of them it is, some of them it isn't. I decided just to skip it on all of them. So for the uh, leg wrappings, I'm going to use this dark green. And for the boots, I'm going with German camo medium brown. Boots complete. Next thing I'll do is any wood, so that would be the stock of the submachine gun, the handle for the shovel, also the little handle for the little bayonet here. So if you had a rifle, it would be the rifle. Um, this bayonet's interesting because it's a lot smaller than the rifle bayonet, so it must be a specialized bayonet for submachine guns, which is interesting. So I'll go ahead and do the uh, wood now. I'm going to move on to the metal parts, so that'll be the bayonet itself, the metal on the submachine gun, there's a little piece of metal here on the shovel, and I do a little bit of metal along this tiny line here, the clasp for, the, uh, for that pouch. So for the gun and the stuff in the back, I'm going to be using a uh, black metallic color. This gives it a good shine and it gives it uh, a blackish look so it's not a it doesn't look like a, just a steel uh, weapon because most of them had bluing on them so they had they didn't look uh, they didn't look metallic they looked blackish but it had some shine to them and then for the blade on the bayonet I'm just going to use regular old uh, steel color oily steel in this case I'm done painting the model with all the base colors, minus the skin of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my small brush and my Agrax and I'm going to go over all of the kit, the weapon, the boots, everything with the Agrax and then for the straps it's good to let a little bit of Agrax get into those, uh, those creases along the side of each strap because that adds more depth to it. And yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do the Agrax now. Alright, 
right now the agrax is now dry so now I'm going to do the highlighting so this is a simple just one one level of highlighting and it's just the base color um, of each piece so I'm just going to hit the edges and the, the wide flat spots on top I'm going to leave the uh, creases with the darker color in them so I'll just take uh, each of the base colors and just go over uh, each piece in turn Yeah, so done with that, didn't take hardly any time. So here he is uh, pretty much painted, the body and the gear. The only thing I have left to do is the base and the face and the skin. Uh, I hate doing skin. If you've ever watched one of these, you know that. So I try to keep it as simple as humanly possible. So I'm going to do the same way I did my Marines. I'm just going to use highlight flesh. It takes a couple coats to uh, get it covered. And then, but once it is, I will take some, uh, uh, where is that, here it is, after the uh, highlight flesh is dry, I will take some of this Reichland flesh shade and just go over one time with the uh, Reichland flesh shade. You can go over it more times, you want to make them darker, and their skin darker, just put another coat or maybe two of the Reichland flesh shade on. But I've been doing one for the rest of the guys. So I will just stick with that. All right, so done with the skin and done with the model itself. Now all I got left to do is the base. As you can see it's pretty simple looking. Not real fancy, but it's done. So the base I've been doing an island theme, so I'll be doing just some sand yellow on the base. Uh, if you want to do like a jungle theme, you could do a darker earth color and then add some flock to it. But I'll be doing a jungle theme, so I'll just have the uh, sandish colored base and a few uh, just tufts of grass. Now the desert uh, sand color is on the base and dry. I like to use these model air colors for the base color on these uh, bases because it's pretty runny and it can seep down in there around the boots and feet that are touching the ground quite easily. So next thing I'll do is I'll paint, uh, I'll just dry brush some more sand, this Iraqi sand color over the top. And then I'm going to paint the uh, edge of the base with tan earth. And then I'm just going to put a couple of these uh, jungle tufts on it. I was putting a different type of tuft on, but I've run out of those, so this guy will just have jungle tuft only. There we have them. Last Japanese uh, soldier completed for now but uh, it's still a little wet but there he is doesn't look half bad took me about uh, half an hour <laughs> to do it most of the times waiting for the washes and the uh, paint to dry but uh, SMG sergeant complete there's all the uh, colors that I've used in this so overall this uh, technique is very fast and it gives a uh, decent looking figure I, I think at least. Good enough for the tabletop at least. So now I'm going to do a quick just showcase of uh, my Japanese army. Here we have my completed Japanese army. As I said for now. <laughs> I guess armies are never actually complete. I still need to get some tanks and some other stuff but uh, here's all my Riflemen, quite a bit. I love these guys with the flags. The uh, Japanese Warlord kit comes with a couple big flags. Also comes with quite a few of these uh, little rifle banner things. So quite a few rifles. We got four machine gunners. We got four knee mortars. Here's my officers. 
Got a medic. These are my submachine gun guys. These are for bolt action. Uh, they're going to be sergeants and bolt action squads. Oh, chain of command doesn't. You can't take uh, submachine guns for Japanese in chain of command, unfortunately. Uh, I got a uh, 20 millimeter AA gun, which is probably my favorite model out of all of these. Excellent in chain of command. Uh, not it's okay in bolt action, but mainly I'll be using it in chain of command. Pretty much the most heavy firepower you can get for the Japanese in that game. Got a couple of these kamikaze uh, anti-tank guys. Medium mortar. That's a chain of command thing. And he has a spotter with him. This will be my uh, mortar battery observer in chain of command and my spotter in bolt action. I have a uh, AT rifle. Medium machine gun and also a light howitzer. So that is it for the overview. I'm gonna just set them up as uh, in for each game and what the platoons would look like. Here's the platoon set up for chain of command. This is the 42 through 45 uh, configuration for the Japanese platoon. So the base platoon, I got my officer, Lieutenant Tanaka, and the platoon sergeant. So far, no name. Also have my mortar battery spotter, should I need him, and the medic, who I've learned is pretty handy. Uh, the platoon also has three nine-man squads. It's got a machine gun with three-man crew, and a sergeant with a rifle, and the rest are just riflemen. Also has a nine-man knee mortar squad. So four knee mortars, four loaders, and a sergeant. And I also have one extra section because that's always a nice option to have to bring an extra squad in uh, with your support points. Then the uh, AA gun, five man crew. Machine gun, five man crew. The uh, tank hunter squad. The AT rifle who still needs like three, three more guys. I believe there's a five man crew on the AT rifle which is pretty wild. And then I have the uh, light howitzer with five man crew and junior leader. So that is the setup for the 42 through 45 platoon for chain of command. And we have them set up for bolt action. So I got just my leader and an extra man. I want to get some submachine guns for them. So when I get my next box of Japanese I'll probably wind up making a special uh, two man on one base uh, lead, leadership squad for the Japanese with submachine guns. But these are the squads I have here, 11 man squads. They each have a machine gun and loader depicted by the guy laying down next to them and they each have a submachine gun squad leader. I wish I get more submachine guns for bolt action in these squads but I can't. I'm with the bonsai rule and being fanatics, these guys are uh, pretty deadly in uh, bolt action when they uh, when they charge. Because no matter how many pins you have, you just get up and you go you go after them. So having more tough fighters would be nice, but I suppose it's a game balance thing. Uh, that's another interesting squad. Is the Japanese are allowed to take a light machine gun section, so they can take a light machine gun and add extra men to it, and they fight as normal the rifles can fire the machine gun can fire but all the same rules apply can't move and shoot it but I don't usually take light machine gun or medium machine guns but uh, I'm gonna try it out because I think having a bunch of extra guys in there who can move and fire or just be uh, meat shields for the uh, MG be pretty sweet uh, these are my only real anti-tank asset they're hard to get to uh, get them home but when they do I think they're at plus eight on their pen for bolt action which is pretty awesome and of course the veteran AT rifle one of my favorite little units to take on any army I can the two man you know small team veterans and they got a decent weapon that's they're really good in the game and then the light mortar or I'm sorry light howitzer is also a good in the game this model I believe depicted is actually only a one inch template because they have a special light shell rule 
But they do have a 75 millimeter mountain gun, I believe, and that's what I'll probably be running it as because that two inch template, I'd rather have that any day than save a few points. And yeah, that's about it for these guys. Of course, I got the AA gun. I always bring that. And I got my knee motors. I could bring a grenadier squad. I can bring a mixed weapon squad and have one knee motor in with the regular squad. I tried that once. Wasn't really impressed for 25 points, but maybe I'll give it another go. Or just run a grenadier squad with three of them in it, and maybe all three of them together can do something. And of course, the uh, medium mortar. Always a must take in any uh, list I ever do is a mortar with a spotter. Uh, this guy here. I think he's a contempe or whatever political officer. He's inexperienced and he only buffs green troops. But for 15 points, it's a cheap dice. And then I got the medic, so. And also a high ranking officer if I want to bring a captain or something. So that's it for the bolt action portion. This is kind of almost the list I'm going to be running when I play this Saturday. But, uh,. I said it was done. Um, it is done for Chain of Command. I can run a legal platoon for that game with support. Uh, I don't have any vehicles. I always bring trucks in bolt action. Uh, I don't have any Japanese trucks and I don't feel like paying 35 bucks a piece for each one from Warlord. So eventually I might get some trucks but for now I'm just gonna these guys are just gonna be slogging it I think in bolt action. My plan with these guys is to run infantry heavy. I think these squads can go up to 13 or 14 men each. So I would like to get them up to that. Have full squads, four of them, maybe a fifth one. Just five 13 man squads uh, of veterans. Yeah, forget about it. So, anyway, that's it for my Japanese force and the painting tutorial. And we'll be back next time for uh, another battle report. Thanks for watching.